Hello, Atlanta, and welcome back. If you're thinking about applying for forbearance, are you sure it won't affect your credit? What if you're worried about the value of your home and wondering if you should sell now or maybe wait for later? And how about if you and your spouse or significant other are thinking about buying your first home? Does it make sense to buy it now? Would it make sense to wait until a little later in the year? Or maybe would it make sense to wait until next year? Also, if you live anywhere in Roswell, Cobb County, Roswell, or Marietta, Alpharetta, any of the areas surrounding Roswell, you're going to want to stay tuned for our fourth segment of the show where we're going to give a neighborhood spotlight on Clary Lakes. That's in Roswell, Cobb County, Roswell. And then, are people looking for different types of homes after the pandemic than before? And I know it sounds funny for me to say after the pandemic because we're really not totally finished with the pandemic, but uh, are people going to look for different types of homes after the pandemic than before? This is Cleve Gaddis, and you're listening to Your Move Atlanta right here on AM640, Atlanta's home to Fox News Radio. I appreciate you joining us for another week's edition. If you'd like to interact with us, it's really easy. Just go to yourmoveatlanta.com, Y-O-U-R-M-O-V-E, Atlanta.com, yourmoveatlanta.com. Click on Contact Us. You can actually submit a question. Be totally happy to answer it. If you've got a, a question that comes from something that we talk about on the show, go to Your Move Atlanta. If you think something we've talked about on the show uh, is wrong, you have a different opinion, go to yourmoveatlanta.com and post information there. You can also get our podcasts on Apple Podcast, on Stitcher, uh, on SoundCloud, just look for Cleve Gaddis, C-L-E-V-E-G-A-D-D-I-S, or you can go to yourmoveatlanta.com, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you will see <clears throat> all of our podcasts there. And you can sign up for the podcast, and then every single week, uh, instead of getting one hour-long radio show, you'll get four individual 10-minute segments. And we would love for you to listen. We'd love for you to interact with us. Big question, small question makes no difference. We live, eat, and breathe helping people make the best decisions when buying or selling Atlanta real estate. Our goal is to help you buy and sell Atlanta homes with absolute 100% confidence. My family's been in the real estate business for 33 years. And again, we live, eat, breathe, and sleep real estate. We want you to make the best decisions possible when buying, selling, or investing in homes anywhere in Metro Atlanta. Again, to visit us, just go to yourmoveatlanta.com. Your move, Y-O-U-R-M-O-V-E, Atlanta.com. Hey, Looks to me like the world is starting to wake up. Unlike many of you who are out there listening, I was out and about almost every single day uh, over the last couple of months. I know that is unusual uh, given what we do for a living. We had a number of transactions in process, and we had to keep up with those transactions. We have people (laughs) moving to Atlanta from out of state. Uh, Their relocation from Michigan, for example, doesn't stop just because of a pandemic. So we have to continue to help those people um, do the walkthroughs, get the homes closed, all of that. And we've always, during this entire process since the very beginning, have taken steps to be safe with face masks and and shoe covers and and, uh, hand sanitizer and wiping down door handles and doorknobs and things like that. So we've always tried real hard to stay safe. Uh, But I've been out and about more. Uh, The world is getting back to normal. More sellers are calling, wanting to talk about listing their homes. I was on an appointment earlier uh, over in the Marietta area talking to a gentleman who was unable to get his home sold uh, before the coronavirus crisis started. He wishes wishes he had handled things a little bit differently, and uh, hopefully he will work with us moving forward so that we can actually get his home sold. But my question for you is, are you getting out and about? Are you starting to wake up? Uh, are you? Have you been to a restaurant in your area? Are you still nervous? Are you excited? Um, I mean, tell me what you're thinking. I'd love for you to go to yourmoveatlanta.com, click on Contact Us, and give me some thoughts. Uh, you could also connect with us on Facebook. You can just go look for Gaddis Group or Cleve Gaddis on Facebook, and you can connect with us there. I'd love to hear your comments. What are you doing? Uh, what are you excited about? What are you scared of? Um, you know, what's going on in your life when it comes to getting out and getting back in action? We need to move on at this point to a listener question. Lin- Lindsay in Brookhaven wrote in saying, I think I'll need to apply for forbearance, but I'm worried how it might affect my credit. What do I need to know? And Lindsay, that is a good question. And I wish all of the details on how a forbearance would affect your credit had already been worked out. I'm disappointed to tell you that they have not. And But let's talk about something there. We were working recently with Jenny in Duluth, 
she was experiencing sort of the same issue. I know I need to apply for a mortgage forbearance, and a forbearance is sort of a, it's not a forgiveness, but it's a skipping of payments. And so, for example, if you applied for a mortgage forbearance and any loan owned by the U.S. government, and that's probably 75% of the loans, loans out there are owned or insured by the U.S. government, all of those are eligible for mortgage forbearance during the time of the coronavirus crisis. And let's just say, for example, you had no ability to pay your mortgage payments, you could call your lender. And by the way, we have a great document that tells you exactly what you need to do if you're applying for forbearance. These are the questions you need to ask. These are the things you need to be sure of. Uh, you can go to yourmoveatlanta.com. Just ask me to send you a copy of the mortgage forbearance documents, an article I wrote a couple of weeks ago. Lots of great information. But Lindsay's question is, I'm worried about how it might affect my credit. And so the U.S. CARES Act, which is the Coronavirus Relief Act, also amended the Fair uh, Debt Credit Reporting Act. I'm sorry I'm butchering it, I know. Uh, but it amended the laws on how credit reporting gets handled by the credit reporting agencies. And it says specifically that if you miss a payment during mortgage forbearance, that it is not to be counted as a missed payment. Now, Jenny in Duluth was worried about whether or not they would show as not a, a I didn't make the payment, I'm 30, 60, 90 days due, but it would show a payment due of $1,000. Instead of it showing 1000 it would show zero, zero, and zero for a 30-day period. So she was worried. How would that affect, number one, her ability to get another mortgage? Because I know she's planning to sell her home later in the year. And how might that affect her credit cards? And so I wish if you're out there listening and you know the answer to this question, go to yourmoveatlanta.com, click on Contact Us, and tell me what the answer is. But I think it's a little too early to tell. So I know that the CARES Act says they're not supposed to report them as past due payments, but it doesn't mean that it's not going to be obvious to another creditor that you've missed payments. And so if you miss payments on your mortgage, then certainly your credit card companies could become concerned. If you missed payments on your mortgage and you sold your house and were going to get a new mortgage later in the year, then your new mortgage company might be concerned that you missed payments on your old mortgage. So Jenny in Duluth decided that she was going to make her payments because she really only needed one month's worth of relief. She knew her job was coming back. She was furloughed. She knew her job was coming back. So she decided she was going to scrape together the money and she was going to make her payment. She's going to have to make the payment anyway. And she decided to do that so that she would not have to worry at all about how it would affect her credit cards, how it would affect her ability to get a mortgage. We will certainly cover more on this topic as we move forward. And if you have anything to share, just go to yourmoveatlanta.com, yourmoveatlanta.com, click on Contact Us. How has the Atlanta market been doing? Well, I'm going to tell you, busy, busy uh, is the word for the Atlanta market. It's certainly a little slower than it was this time last year, but listen to this. 2,289 new properties were listed in the last seven days. 1,780 properties had a price decrease. 2,097 uh, homes went under contract, meaning a buyer and a seller came to an agreement for the seller to sell and the buyer to buy that property. And about 1,500 properties closed. So my suggestion for you is if you're out there listening and you wanted to be one of the 2,289 properties listed, don't wait. If you feel like your plans to sell your home were put on hold because of the coronavirus, <laughs> I say you might want to think again. My entire team is now MoveSafe certified, and we have special protocols in place to help you sell your home so you can move on with life and buy the perfect home for your family, all while keeping everyone safe. To learn more, just visit yourmoveatlanta.com, Y-O-U-R-M-O-V-E, atlanta.com today, and you can download our free information guides. So if you're out there and you're feeling like, hey, I wanted to move on, I wanted to be in a new home before the school season started, I wanted to upsize, downsize, right size, uh, go to a ranch home, two-story home, whatever it is about your home that's not meeting your needs, if you had plan to do, plans to do something to change it, uh, don't just give up. Don't just lay down and give up. It could be that if you're working with the right people, with the right plan and the right protocols, it could be that you're able to sell your home for a really good price, even in today's market. Keep everybody safe in the process and believe it or not, be sitting in your new home so that when the school season starts, you don't have anything to worry about in terms of moving after 
the school season. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to somebody who is worried or talk about somebody who is worried their home value might decrease. Will it? Stick with us. We'll be back.